filament LED bulbs like this are becoming increasingly popular with do-it-yourselfers who like making their own lighting displays. It's a fairly easy process to break the glass and then use wire cutters to cut the individual filaments loose to give you a very compact, bright, linear display which can be lit up with uh, battery packs or uh, any DC power supply. Now I don't recommend going with the broken glass technique to getting your elements because there's always danger associated with broken glass and besides these are fairly inexpensive on eBay where you can get them for uh, less than a dollar a piece. The voltage required to drive these uh, depends on the particular filament LED you've got. For example, this one has 28 LED elements and I'll show you what those look like in a minute. And it requires a, a minimum of 70 volts. Here's what one looks like when powered by a string of nine 9 volt batteries connected in series. They're really bright. If there's one problem with these is that they are delicate. You bend them like this and they break very easily. And that's because the LEDs are mounted on a glass or in some cases a laboratory grown sapphire uh, rod and uh, that's very brittle and easy to break. Fortunately, there's an alternative which is much more durable and much more flexible. Let me show you what it is. This is a flexible filament LED bulb. Instead of several short, stiff LED elements like this, it has a single flexible filament which can be wound in a spiral or any other shape that they want. The advantage of these is that because the LED element is flexible, if you harvest it for a project, it's not likely you're going to break it. Here's what you get. Now, believe it or not, a single bulb like this yields a flexible LED element which is almost 10 inches long. And as you can see, they're extremely flexible. They have the consistency of overcooked spaghetti. So you can bend them in any shape you want to. Let's fire one up and see what it looks like. Now I've hooked this up to a somewhat larger battery pack because this is longer, it has more LEDs in it, and it requires more voltage. This is actually 145 volts, which when I connect it will be knocked down by the internal resistance of the batteries to about 130 volts dropped across the element itself. And there we go. Now this is looking blue on your screen because of the color balance I have the camera set to, uh, but in reality this is green. Now you can get these in a wide range of colors all the way from red to violet. Uh, the problem is though these aren't available yet as far as I can find uh, anywhere as components which mean you're, uh, means you're going to have to harvest them from light bulbs. And the light bulbs run about um, seven and a half, eight dollars a piece. But again, even though it's lit up, they're fun to play with. You can see you can bend the element in any way you want to to create whatever effect you want. They're really neat. Let's turn the power down to show how they work. I've zoomed in to give a sense of scale for just how small the individual LEDs in one of these filaments is. There are 22 of them in every inch. That means the entire string, which is almost nine and a half inches long, has 206 individual LEDs spaced along its length. How these work is that the LEDs are actually ultraviolet and that light is absorbed by the fluorescent materials in the silicone coating, which then glow in whatever color the fluorescent uh, dye has been designed for. So, if you have a lighting display like an infinity mirror or maybe a digital readout where you want curved elements instead of uh, the usual squared off ones, I hope you'll give flexible filament LEDs a try. They're a lot of fun to play with and interesting for science projects too. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you'll stop by my main website waynesthisandat.com where you'll find hundreds of other even more interesting projects.